Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 92 of your Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. We're going to talk today about um, the change zone. Hopefully I can come up with a clever title <laughs> or something interesting. I love making titles. I know, I know I'm know. i supposed to make titles that catch keywords and and do search engine optimization and stuff. But, and I wonder, like, is there a job out there where you can just make cool-sounding titles? They sound cool to me, and they're fun. I just love titling things. So, um, it's interesting. I was just talking to Voxing with my my coach, my business coach, Steph Lagana, and uh, told her I wasn't going to do anything. And then this happens a lot. I tell myself, I give myself full permission. I'm going to lay here and do not a goddamn thing. <laughs> I've had its twin Tuesday. I left the house, you know, I got up at 4.30 after not sleeping well all night. You know, twin Tuesdays are long days. And I got home and I fell asleep for five hours of crazy. Just crazy. So you, this happens a lot, and you may notice this, and it has to do with change and how you do your business, how you do your life. All of this stuff applies whether you have a business or not, because sometimes life is your business or kids are your business. Whatever you're engaged in with life, you give yourself permission to not do, all of a sudden energy comes and you get a nudge to do a podcast. <laughs> So I know a lot of people are, it's a new moon, happy new moon in Leo. Virginia Rosenberg is who I follow for new moon reports. So go to her website, virginiarosenberg.com, and consider kicking her five bucks or something every month because she does some comprehensive reports. She's been doing it for years. You won't even notice five or ten bucks a month and it it helps support her you know what i'm gonna soapbox for just a second the internet has trained us to expect everything for free seth godin wrote a blog post about this years ago and it always stuck with me and it changed how i do stuff we expect it for free but it's not free for the people who are producing it do you know what it costs to keep just a basic website is an annual expense. The time, the training, all the things. So if somebody's asking for a little donation a month, or they have a Patreon group where you can kick in 50 bucks a month for all the air quote free, valuable content you're getting, um, do it. It's not free. None of that stuff is free. So let's not be cheap asses. Let's kick in a little, a few bucks to the people who are producing stuff that we count on. I count on her, uh, her new moon reports. I like her and Ann Ortley, A N N E O R T E L E E. Although Ann doesn't do them in the same way, but I started following her in like, geez, two thousand, year two, nineteen ninety nine, maybe. Good lord. Um, anyway, so let me get back on track. So when we're changing, uh, when we give ourselves permission to rest, our energy often will pick up because our resistance is at our tiredness is often, we don't want to do what we're telling ourselves we should be doing. I should be finishing the email stuff I started like two or three months ago. I should be uh, finishing my level three human design recording. So I need to go through and make notes. And I have to go over material lots of times for it to stick in my head. I, so I go over material like sometimes six or seven times. So I need to do that kind of stuff. But if you pressure yourself to do it, then you just get more and more tired. When uh, this often try this for yourself and you can't fake it right you have to (laughs) you can't be like okay i'm going to do what michelle said and i'm going to give myself permission to do nothing but and then see if i get more energy it's not an if this then that kind of (laughs) deal you have to really let yourself off the hook because sometimes you really do just need to lay there and do nothing nothing at all 
So, uh, and I don't know if this is peculiar to projectors. I think it's just human. When you give yourself permission to do what you're really doing anyway, which is nothing, you get some energy. And at least if you do need to rest, your rest is going to be a whole lot better because you don't have this hidden barking chihuahua in the back of your brain hollering at you that you're not doing it right. Okay, so just be honest. Just get honest with yourself. You ain't doing it anyway. <laughs> so just say I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to I'm going to binge watch the IT crowd. I'm going to watch the Travel Man, but Richard Iowati lately just cracks me up. If you don't know who he is, give that a Google. A Y O A D E. He's a British comedian actor. Been around a long time. Anyway, a lot of people I know are in this liminal space. I've talked about it on my Facebook page. I will keep talking about it as long as I want you. <laughs> as long as I want to talk about it. Damn it. In this liminal space, this transitory space, because so many of the things that we normally would be doing right now, we can't do. Can't travel right now. Can't even really, if you want to go to Europe, you don't even bother planning a trip. We don't know when we're going to get to go back to Paris or anywhere that has any sense about them and won't let us sicko Americans come spread the COVID all around. Right. So it's going to be a while. So we have a extra time on our hands. People even who are working from home, they have this extra time on their hands. It's important to acknowledge that because you're not commuting, right? You don't have to get up and spend an hour getting ready and then an hour in the car and then an hour, you know, two or three hours or more. For a lot of people, it was more. Two or three hours in the morning and another two or three hours at night just getting ready for work, getting there, working, coming back, decompressing from the commute, yada, yada. So it's important to acknowledge that there's extra time on your hands and look at what you're doing with it. Like, are you just feeling a little like something's wrong, but you don't know what it is, so you just spend more time on um, Facebook? Are you just eating more because you... It's like you have time on your hands now that you don't know how to fill because you've been filling it for decades with work stuff, and now that's all gone. So it's that rug being pulled out from under you kind of feeling like we're at a loss. We don't know what to do with ourselves. We've got a lot of extra time on our hands, we and the global we, because my actual day-to-day -day life hasn't really changed that much. So, all this extra time I'm noticing is leading to reflection, review. We're wrapping up summer. It's a normal time of year to kind of start taking stock. And on a visceral, physical level, where our eyes are already perceiving that the light, the length of light is already changing, right? It's subtle. It's little, but our bodies are already like, oh, winter's coming. There's less light. These preparation, ancient, you know, ancient stuff in your brain and in your cells is preparing for turning inward for winter. So it's a normal time of year to be gathering things together, har getting ready for harvest, getting things in order, and reflecting, reviewing. Maybe reviewing is a better word. I don't know. P you Pick the word that you want to pick because that's just how free you are. <laughs> Reflection or review, whichever one you like the best. <laughs> review, how we do things, how we do relationships. I talked a little bit about that on the last call. So interesting enough, so I had made that podcast in the middle of the damn night, loaded it up, and then uh, Heather Westmoreland, who, if you want to get to know her energy, go a few podcasts back and listen to the one where she and I did a podcast conversation together. She called and asked if she if I had time for her to, to listen to her process some stuff, and it was everything about that 
podcast. We're never alone. Even when we think we're alone in our process, we never are. Because these waves of change go through the population they they go th- they flow around the world and you'll it's all, all of a sudden you hear people talking about oh this relationship that relationship or oh i think i want to restructure my job i think i want to i want to mix it up i want to do something different it, this feels old and doors need to close and new doors need to open and all of that So what I want to just talk to you a little bit about is that process of change. If you don't have it already, I have a just a little ebook PDF. It was like my first lead magnet. And it's eight ways to create and sustain change. We're good at creating change. We're not good at sustaining change change the little daily habits the new things that you have to kind of grab yourself by the scruff of the neck and kind of in the beginning kind of make yourself do these new habits if you want to lay a foundation for change that really lasts and it's very predictable there are tools out there that work but we we have you know it, it works if you work it we have to do it We can't just think about changing our habits. We actually do have to change them. So I mentioned uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear. It's a great book for pulling together like a lot of different methods into one solid, cohesive, very well-organized book. Really like that book a lot. So it is normal to think about change for a long, long time. And in that little ebook, if you don't have it, let me know. Just shoot me an email, info at thatmichellewolf.com. I'll send you that PDF. I actually just updated it uh, like a couple months ago. There's just eight little tips in there. and But there's a, if you like theory, um, Prochaska's theory of change. I'm just overview that. Like we go through these, um, it's not linear, right? We don't decide to make a change. Look at what we need to do it, change the habits, sustain those changes long enough that we have new habits. No, we're not. We are the most inefficient creatures on earth. That'd be too simple. (laughs) We have to think about change. Contemplation. So pre-contemplation, contemplation, uh, and then taking action. And then it's this cyclic. There's like, I don't know, five or six steps. Can't believe I can't remember it. But we think about it, or someone tells us we need to make a change, we'll think about it, we contemplate it. And then we take actions, and then we fall off the new habit track, the new habit train. And then we experience the consequences again, and then we're like, oh, yeah, I guess I do kind of need to make that change. Let me contemplate that some more. Uh, and look at, you know, what did I try to do last time that didn't work? Did I try to change too many things at once? This is where most people really trip themselves up. You try to change everything at once. You try to quit smoking and quit sugar and quit alcohol and quit all the stuff all at the same time. And that's just, it's an, it's a noble effort, right? We're like, I'm doing stuff that doesn't feel good. I'm just going to stop all of it at the same time. Sounds good. It's one of those ideas that sounds good on paper, but it doesn't work. It's too much. We are little fragile creatures when it comes to change, and we have to sort of sneak up on ourselves and do these little habit changes that we barely notice. If you stay determined, like if you're determined to give up sugar, you will give up sugar. If you're determined to quit drinking, You will quit drinking, but this stage of change that you're in is a good thing to know because it tells you how how committed are you. So a lot of times we're committed in our in our brain that thinks change sounds good, (laughs) but when it comes down to the discomfort of behavioral changes, we don't like that, and so then we step away from it. So. So those are some pitfalls, like trying to change too many things all at one time. 
not doing the research to support yourself in that change. And this can be some things similar to what I'm doing. Like I'm I'm stepping away from one kind of coaching and a particular kind of client into a different level of coaching with a different kind of client. Plus I'm adding WordPress web development and some branding and some, like a, I'm for, what's forming is a little human design based kind of like not really a business in a box but a, a, for new business people like let's get you lined up let's get your let's do a little magical things and let's do some practical things and let's understand your human design and then let's build your website or give your website a makeover with who you understand yourself to be in this new energy so when you're wanting to make changes like that maybe you are stepping in uh, this time has really brought it home to you that you are stuck at home but you actually feel so much better because you don't have an hour and a half commute because you're not experiencing acid reflux from being in an office building all day when you're a projector and you don't know that you're like a human sponge picking all that shit up all day you know, you're not spending your weekends now flat on your back exhausted because these subtle things aren't that used to stress you out and drain you are gone. So it's asking yourself, like, what's what's happened? Let's do a little life review of 2020 so far, even though it's only, you know, well, we're, what, three quarters of the way? September, October, November, December. Let's do a little review. How was I feeling in January? How am I feeling now? Aside from the political, you know, aside from that stuff, the obvious stuff that we know is a pain in the ass, but the stuff that like, oh, am I eating better because I'm not going to restaurants at lunch every day? Am I shopping more thoughtfully? Am I, is my sleep better? Uh, do I, am I spending more time on social media because I have three hours added to my day and I don't really know what to do with myself? And do I want to keep doing that or would I like to revisit some dreams I used to have and maybe structure my day now to, to use the time I would have been sitting in the car to write that book I've wanted to write? What do I want to do? So it's not making decisions. This is contemplations. Maybe that's what we'll do for the title. Um, the contemplation stage of change. That has a nice ring to it. I'll probably forget it. But <laughs> by the time it comes to... I'm just going to take a dry erase marker and write it on the top of the dryer. When I don't want to sit in my car because it's in the middle of the night and it's dark and kind of creepy outside, I hang out in the bathroom because it has good acoustics. And I don't know if you all do this. But it is a good thing to do is to keep like expo dry erase markers in your bathroom so you can write yourself notes and reminders on your mirror. That's one of the things that's in the eight ways of change is you've got to see that stuff and it can't stay the same. About once a month, you've got to erase it and write something new because your brain gets used to seeing it and just tunes it out. OK, so what was that title? I'm just going to write it on top of the dryer. Because it's a nice smooth surface and it wipes right off. <laughs> Contemplate. Okay, I got it. Contemplating. The okay. So, let's contemplate. Right? Let's take a few weeks in this in-between, this new moon energy of contemplation and commitment. The gate 29 and the gate... Gosh, I can see it in my head. If you want, if it matters to you, go to Understanding Human Design on Facebook and look at this week's weather. It's gate 29 and the root, it, the, I mean, the, the other gate is off of the emotional solar plexus and it's the one farthest down on the bottom. I can see it in my head. It's like 50 something. I feel like there's a five in it. Um... Contemplate it. So when you're in contemplation, that's not the time to jump off the cliff and expect to, your wings to pop out 
when you jump off the cliff too soon, you hit the ground like Wile E. Coyote and your, you know, your legs are all, your leg is up where your ears are and your arm is twisted at an unnatural angle and your face is flat and your nose is accordioned. Like you don't go jump off the cliff when you're in this contemplation phase. This is the time for contemplation. Now, some people will be further along. I feel like I know a lot of people who have been contemplating all this time, and we are ready to make commitments. Like, okay, I'm committing to this, the energy of this. I don't know what it's going to look like yet, but I'm committing to never exhausting myself. I'm committing to not handing out chance after chance after chance to people who are not ready to be kind and not ready to be healthy. They're just not ready. That's not a judgment, right? People get to do life how they do life. Uh, If they are causing harm, then it's the most karmically responsible thing that I can do is to shut that down for both our sakes, right? When you have to close a door because someone is not you're not, let's just say resonance, right? You're just not resonating. You're irritated by them. They're irritated by you. There's this weirdo dynamic happening. It's okay to say, yeah, this doesn't fit. And I'm going to do this in the kindest way possible. But I'm going to close this door. Then you stop that person from adding to their negative karma by the negative interactions between the two of you or the group, the group of you, right? A lot of times we won't, like I should have gotten divorced. I should have followed through on it years before I actually did. That happens a lot because we want, we want it to work, right? We don't want to throw in the towel too soon and that's fine, but it can be hard to close the door when you know it's going to hurt someone And you know that it's going to be sloggy and it could potentially get pretty ugly. You know, we just, we don't want to do it. (laughs) But Then you finally have to do it. But you're, you're not, it looks on the surface like you're hurting someone else by saying goodbye. But you're actually stopping that process of them racking up more things to feel bad about later possibly not till after death but to feel bad about later like um so the example i used to use a lot you if you've been following me for a while you probably heard it but sharon salzberg was in i think india with her meditation teacher and uh they were sitting in their little rickshaw or tuk tuk and some guy reached in and snatched her bag and took off with it and her teacher was appalled she's like you're holding an umbrella why didn't you hit him why did you let him take your bag? And she was like, well, I couldn't hit him. And she's like, now her teacher was like, well, now he's got the bad karma of having stolen your bag. Now he has to make, you know, amends for that at some point. Now or at af- after death, he's going to have to pay for that action. And you could have stopped it. Isn't that strange? Like, we just don't think that way. But it's true. Okay, anyway. So some people are contemplating, what changes do I want to make? What do I want to do with all this empty space in my day now? What dreams have I put on the shelf? I couldn't do them because I was sitting in the damn car all the time or on the train or whatever. And then other people have done that and they're ready to commit. And this moon is the commitment energy. You can do whatever you want. Like you don't have to, oh, I missed the boat. I didn't contemplate all summer, so now I can't commit. Now I'm not ready to commit, and the new moon's in commitment energy, so I just fucked myself because I'm missing, the, you know, I'm missing the boat here. You're not missing any boat. If you're in contemplation, you're in contemplation. Everything is okay. It's fine. You'll commit when you're ready to commit. Okay, so contemplation phase, you don't jump off the cliff and say, oh, I've contemplated for 15 minutes. I need to quit smoking and quit drinking and quit eating sugar. And I'm going to do that tomorrow. That's when you jump off the cliff and you hit the ground. Because you haven't prepared. You haven't prepared for your wings to catch you. 
Oh, the time came to jump off the cliff. Take the leap of faith and you'll be getting your you'll be getting your wings uh, only if you're ready, only if you've done the preparation. Otherwise, you're going to be getting big rocks on your face, peace. <laughs> there's the energy of preparedness and then there's the practical real world tangible reality things that you can do. So research first. If you're contemplating, read some books about change. Zen Essential Habits, fabulous, fabulous. Zen Essential Habits, very inexpensive. Uh, you, you can get it on Amazon. I would encourage you to go to his website. Just Google it, Zen Essential Habits. And go to his website and buy it from there, right? Let's do what we can, maybe, the little places where we can stop using Amazon. I don't know about you, but I can't. I'm not ready to cold turkey it off Amazon Prime yet. <laughs> Definitely not willing to give up my TV yet. But little things, like I'm buying used books from Powell's Books in Oregon or other places I can find used books. Go to... Go to the author's website. A lot of times you can buy their book from them, from their website. Um, okay, so Zen Essential Habits. Leo, not even going to try to spell his last name, starts with a B. And then Atomic Habits by James Clear. And the only reason I can remember that one is because I've been reading it a little bit every day. So, and then if you want to go nerdy... Prochaska, and I'm missing one of the names on that too. Prochaska and, oh brother. Anyway, stages of change, right? Okay, this one I'm going to have to look up. De Clemente. Prochaska and De Clemente, stages of change. P R O C H A S K A stages of change. There's YouTube videos, there's blog posts, there's academic documents from universities, and then there's cartoon charts to help you understand the stages of change. Pre contemplation, contemplation, preparation. That's what I'm talking about right now. Prepare. Then you take the action. Then you sustain the action. And then you fuck it up. <laughs> Prepare for the fuck up. Everybody fucks it up. You've done it a hundred times already in your life. You know you have. You know you have. You thought you were ready, but you weren't. You thought you had prepared. You thought you were ready for action. You thought you were ready to take that leap of faith off the cliff and your wings were just going to magically pop out your back and fly you around and that didn't happen. <laughs> okay. This is such a predictable, it's laughable. It is such a predictable cycle that it's funny. It's that funny, not funny. Pre-contemplation, you might not even really be thinking about, I need to change this. You might just be having that vague sense of, man, I've been doing deep work with people since I was 18 years old. I wonder if it's time for a change. I wonder if something could be different here. Then contemplation is you're aware of it. But you're not at the action phase. You know you're restless. So people I'm noticing with have a lot of time on their hands and they're filling it with Facebook. You can feel, if you tune into them, you can feel like they're just adrift. They don't really know what to do with all these hours in the morning and the evening. They don't know what to do with themselves. And they're not aware that the restlessness is being driven by this sense of, I used to have things to do in this time slot between 5 a.m. and 7 a.m., and now I don't, and now I don't know what to do with myself. So if you're in contemplation, you're aware, hey, I wonder if this restlessness and this Dorito bag habit might have something to do with 
in the past these hours I had a task and now I don't and I'm adrift and I don't know what the hell to do with myself. Okay, you're aware that a problem exists, but you're not even thinking about, you don't you haven't even gotten that far. Oh, I want to start a business and now I've got time on my hand to do it, but I don't know how to do it. So this would be the time to look at different coaches. Please don't go buy a $25,000 coaching package or a ten, even a tenth or even a $5,000 coaching package until you are ready, you're prepared, and you're ready to take that action. You're not going to miss anything, okay? If you're going to start a business and you have air in your lungs you and working fingers and eyeballs, you can do that when you're 90. If you're 30 something and you haven't figured it out yet, or you're 50 or 60 or 70 or 80, there's still time. <laughs> so don't let time push you to skip fully contemplating and jump over preparation and hop into action because that is a recipe for disaster. Disaster. Contemplation. You're thinking about it not taking action. Preparation is, insert commercial here, get your human design foundations taken care of. So that as you're choosing actions, you're choosing them in alignment with how you're structured, how you're designed to function in the world, which is completely unique. End commercial. Nope. Reopen commercial that michellewolf.com forward slash human design and get in there quick because September's full of weddings and beaches and stuff. Close commercial. So preparation is looking at that. Have I had my human design foundation session? Have I looked at changes that I have made in the past and really fucked them up? Changes that I have made in the past and they've been really successful. And what did I do differently when they were successful? Start to question yourself. Observe your life as if you are an ethnographer, as a a social scientist. And you are studying the being that is you and the times you've made change that worked and the times that you've made change that failed spectacularly. And what did you do different? Start to evaluate. This is preparation. What works for me? Does cold turkey work for me? It, I'll just tell you that it really doesn't work for very many people. If you have to go cold turkey because what you're doing is going to kill you, like a drug addiction or something, and even still you can't go cold turkey, if you're a hardcore alcoholic, you have to have medical supervision or you can die from trying to go cold turkey. If you're trying to go cold turkey off opioids, you can die from that. Don't do that. Get some help. Preparation is looking for coaches. Do you need therapy? Do you need medical supervision? Do you need a program with other people or do you like to lone wolf it but you need to set up some structure. Do you Are you the type of person that needs an accountability buddy or a group or you know damn good well you ain't going to do it? Think about these things. Prepare. Read Zen Essential Habits. Read Atomic Habits. Get yourself ready. Then you take the action, but you prepare for it. You don't on a Tuesday, swear off sugar and start that on a Wednesday. You might think about it and on Tuesday, do the research, understand what your body's about to go through because sugar is very addictive and you are going to go through withdrawal. And even talking about sugar, if the thoughts in your head are like, I could never, I could never give up sugar. What? No, I can't live without it. Oh, you're, that's the voice of addiction, and it's sugar. Are you going to shorten your lifespan for a Twinkie? Come on now. But you think about it, right? You listen to the lies you tell yourself. <laughs> you catch yourself in rationalization. Look for programs. 
Think about what works. You might spend months on preparation before. You wouldn't think about, I'm going to quit sugar on a Tuesday night and I'm going to quit on Wednesday because you're going to fail by Wednesday afternoon. (laughs) You think about it on a Tuesday in August and you actually quit in January. Especially if you've quit and, you know, if you've done the stop and start thing a million times, you might want to take several months to prepare. If you're going to start a business, take a month to prepare. Who do you know that has a successful business? Who do you know personally that runs a business, whether that's landscaping or Fortune 500 company or whatever? Who can you use as model and inspiration? Who's doing the thing that you want to do that you can say to yourself, well, if that chump's doing it, I can do it. Well, if that woman is pulling it off, then I can pull it off. I'm a human. I can learn. (laughs) Right? You can learn. Some of you would never have thought you could handle a Zoom call. And now look at you go. You're a Zoom master. You're a Zoom uh, aficionado. You're a whatever. You're really damn good at it. Okay? When a few weeks ago you were like, oh no, I can't do a Zoom call. Yikes. You can do anything. Then you take the action. Then you stop buying sugar. You stop uh, putting your phone in your room. You buy an old timey alarm clock instead of thinking, well, I can't, I can't leave my phone in the dining room because I need my alarm clock. See, that's how we keep ourselves stuck. Well, I can't because I, I need an alarm clock. Well, let me tell you something, honey bunnies, back in the old timey days, we had this thing that you plugged into the wall and it was called a clock and you set your time on it and you set your alarm on it and you didn't have any phones in your bedroom. And darned if you can't still buy those. (laughs) Okay? Sneaky little subtle things we do. I can't. Because that's rarely ever true. Go buy a damn clock. Speaking from the voice of experience. Then you take the action, okay? You don't take your cell phone into the bedroom. You turn on your old-timey alarm clock. (laughs) You get up in the morning, you don't let yourself check it for an hour after you're up. You stop bringing sugar into the house. You remind yourself that sugar used to be and still should be for special occasions. And every afternoon at 3 p.m. is not a special occasion. (laughs) Okay, then you take the little, little actions. You buy less sugar. You don't pick up your phone for 30 minutes. You, um, then you go 45 minutes. Then you go an hour. Then you little, 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 okay? And you build in all these reminders. Write yourself notes on the bathroom uh, mirror or on top of your dryer. (laughs) You write yourselves notes. And put them in your car. You set your cell phone alarms. Little, little, little. Understanding that for us to change anything in our lives requires monumental effort. Because every part of us is a big fat no to change. Stop eating sugar now! Quit taking the cell phone to bed like your electronic blankie. No! Watch a little less. What? Well, no. <laughs> we are designed to say no to change. So please give yourself credit. If you've tried to make changes and failed, just look back. Contemplate. Prepare. What worked? What didn't work? How are you going to build up your momentum? How are you going to cheerlead yourself into um Cre- putting all the things in places, in, in place, preparing all your little, little tactics, 
building in 15 minutes a day, twice a day to read something inspiring to keep you going because your system is designed to say, fuck you, to change, okay? Once you've been taking those actions for a while and you notice that you don't notice your prompts anymore, switch them up. It's usually three, four weeks. Switch them up, put some new ones. At 30 days, 45 days, 90 days, six months, nine months, and then a year, and then 18 months. Those are predictable times when you're going to want to quit and you're going to want to do the relapse thing. Go forward in your day timer, in your calendar, and leave yourself a note. 30 days, 45 days, 90 days, 6 months, 9 months, a year, and 18 months. Do it. That's part of your preparation. Oh, it's been 30 days. I'm going to want to quit. Actually, you, you could do 3 days, 30 days. And you know yourself, right? If you are the kind that can't make it into the first 24 hours, then maybe every hour you need a cell phone reminder that pops up and says, hey, remember, you're going to want to quit. But this time we're not doing that. So go take a walk. Very predictable times where people are vulnerable to relapse. I'm sure there's a theory out there that explains why it's those times, but I've seen it for decades in my long-term six-month group, I'll be reminding them, right about now, funk soul brother, you're going to want to quit. Right about now, at, you know, <laughs> 90 to 30 days. Well, I miss a 30-day window, I think. 90 days, about halfway through. So that's another one, about halfway through a program. If you sign up for a six-week program, around three weeks, you're going to lose interest. If you sign up, for a six-month program around halfway, you're going to be like, oh, I don't know if I need to go to the call or not. I don't think I'm, I don't know. I don't think I'm getting anything out of this. About halfway through, you're going to want to just chuck it. So leave yourself notes. That's prepare, pre, prepare, <laughs> pa, 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 preparation, preparedness. Understand how your pea brain works and work with it. Don't plan to give yourself a punch in the face halfway through. Leave yourself a nice little note. Hey, honey, you're going to want to quit right now. And remember, you're doing this because you want to live a really healthy, dynamic life. Remember that? Remember why we're doing this? Remember that it's normal to want to quit? You're not a la you just a normal human being and normal human beings find it hard to change and that's why we did so much preparation okay you got to coach yourself or get a coach if you need that then you're going to do all that and you're going to fuck it up you're going to have a slipsy right into a box of little debbies oops i slipped and fell in a box of Star Crunch. Oops, I slipped and fell into a bag of nacho cheese Doritos. Or whatever your thing is. Fortunately, I don't like really either one of those. Mine would be, oh, I slipped and fell in a gigantic basket of cheese fries. And now I'm sick. Oh, I slipped and fell into a 72-hour binge watch of the office for the fifth time. <laughs> a slip trip into a Netflix binge. Okay? Pre-contemplation, you don't know what you're doing. Contemplation, you know you got to do something, but you don't know what. Preparation, you're thinking it over. You're reading. You're preparing. You're putting notes in your daytime. You're looking at all the things that have worked in the past and you're bringing them forward and you're bringing forward things that worked for other people that you want to try. Then you take the action. Then you maintain it. Then you fuck it up. Then you 
go back to, hey, I don't feel good anymore. Oh, hell, I have heartburn. Oh, shit, I've got heartburn again. Why do I have heartburn again? Oh, I relapsed and I didn't even notice. Whoops! Get back on it. Okay, contemplation. Hmm, I prepared, I did some things, I maintained it, and then I relapsed. I wonder why. Let me reflect. Let me contemplate. Let me prepare again, take action again. Your maintenance phase, if you're really determined about this and being honest with yourself, your maintenance phase will last longer. If it's a minor change, your maintenance phase may go on until it's an ingrained habit and you can't imagine going to bed without loading the dishwasher first. That took me, oh, probably about six months. Don't go to bed without loading the dishwasher because it feels so good to get up in the morning to a clean kitchen. Right, so it took me about six months. But they, who, there's no invo- emotional investment in loading the dishwasher. I was just being lazy, so that's an easy one. And you know, there for a while, I would, I would get up in the morning and go, "Fuck, man, I meant to load the dishwashers. I don't like cat food plates in the morning. It's horrible, you know." And then I just start over again. If it's quitting smoking or sugar, or holding yourself accountable to business building activities three to five days a week, whatever you decide is appropriate, you're going to relapse. This applies to everything. Holding yourself accountable to opening up that Word document because you said you were going to use your morning commute time to write that book that is burning in your belly. You show up. Good book for this, Turning Pro by Stephen Pressfield. War of Art. But turning pro, when you're ready to start holding yourself accountable, turning pro, whatever it is, holding yourself accountable to making those live streams that you said you were going to make, holding yourself accountable to committing to a daily practice that you, you know, established at the beginning of a six month program that you paid a lot of money for, okay, holding yourself accountable. Not in a, God damn it, I paid 5000 for that course and I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. Most people don't respond well to that. But saying, hey, you know what? I love myself so much and I respect my money so much and I respect my fellow group people and my coach so much that I'm going to lovingly give this a committed daily um, uh, a- a action. I'm going to do it. I said I was going to do it. I respect and love myself. I respect my money. I respect my compatri- compadres on the journey. I'm going to love, because I love myself, I'm going to set an alarm clock and leave the whirlpool cell phone. portal to the Twitterverse in the dining room because I love myself. Not because I'm a a jellyfish that has no backbone, that can't accomplish anything, that's tried to leave the cell phone in the... Okay, don't do that. That will lead you to relapse because nobody wants to hear that shit. Beating yourself up, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it doesn't work. I love myself so much, I'm going to listen for the voice of God for an hour in the morning instead of listening to the voice of Morning Edition on NPR. I'm gonna, Because I love myself so much, I'm not going to bed without a 15-minute day, whatever my daily practices of journaling or sitting in silence or whatever it is for you. And it, and if I go to bed and as I'm falling asleep, recognize that I didn't do it, then I'm going to get my happy ass back up out of bed and I'm going to do it. Even if I'm just sitting up in my bed in the dark for 15 minutes and then I'm going to lay down and go to sleep. Lovingly recognizing that your system is geared for safety, which equals no change.
Even if what you're trying to change is going to save your life, your system will still fight you to maintain status quo. Okay, that's good news, bad news, right? Because once you get to maintenance and you stay there, then your system will fight you to maintain that one too. So if what it's maintaining is your what a hard fought for um, CrossFit habit, which is what happened for my daughter, you want it to do that, right? You want it to hold you steady in your CrossFit habit because that's what works for you. You want it to make you not cheat on your plan, right? So pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance, relapse, and then back to pre-contemplation. You know you're going to relapse, so already plan on when I relapse, when I fuck it up, how do I plan to talk to myself? You know yourself because your tendency will be to fill in the blank and instead... When I relapse, I'm going to choose to talk to myself like I would a friend or a client. Can you imagine if you're a coach or you're the person who's coaching for free because you're that friend in the group that everybody goes to with their damn problems and you haven't figured out how to fill out an invoice yet? Can you imagine if people came to you and was like and confessed their, oh God, I did this thing, or oh, I'm filled with doubt and I don't think I can do it, and you were like, yeah, you know what, I don't think you can do it either, because you're kind of a fuck up, because you've been talking about this for ten years and you haven't done shit. <laughs> you wouldn't. I hope that you would never say that <laughs> to someone. <laughs> I hope that you would not. Please don't do that to yourself. I love myself enough to talk to myself with the same respect and consideration and L-O-V-E love that I would with a client or a friend. How long have I been yapping? It feels like it's been a while. Let's check the voice recorder. 52 minutes! Good Lord. I've been kind of windy lately. I'm babbling on and on. Okay, anyway, what I wanted to stress to you is important, is in this time, I am noticing a lot of people contemplating, reviewing, looking back at how they've been living life, and asking the most important question, how can I, how could this be different? I want to feel, fill in the blank. I wonder how I can get there. You can one command it, you can... Ask those access consciousness questions. You can go follow people who are really good at that. You can get a coach. I mean, there's a million different ways. How do you want to feel? And then start asking yourself, I wonder how. I wonder what. I wonder if. I wonder questions are great. I wonder if this could be different. I wonder if. I could ever go a whole week not looking at my cell phone for two hours after I get up. I wonder if that's even possible. I wonder if when I put a plan in place that I'm going to write a blog post every week and then I get through a month and realize I didn't do it, I wonder if I could talk to myself like a very dear friend. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if, I wonder how, I wonder what, I wonder why. Don't go too far into the digging why. You know what I mean. I wonder. I wonder what's here that I am not even seeing. I wonder what's possible for me. I'm not even, it's not even in my wheelhouse. You probably can do this right now is look back over your life and realize you missed opportunities because they just weren't even in your frame of reference. This happens to people who were born in poverty and investment opportunities cross their path and they're just like, you're speaking a foreign language. I don't even know what you're talking about. And you miss it because it just wasn't even in your 
frame of reference. It wasn't in your, it wasn't written in your internal policies and procedures manual that you could be wealthy. So when opportunities for wealth crossed your path, you were like, what? Uh, duh? What? <laughs> Again, the voice of experience. Contemplate, prepare for change, then take action. Prepare for relapse. It's going to happen. And then prepare to get your ass back on track with love and kindness. The love and kindness. Remember Mama Bear. Mama Bears don't let their babies act like idiots on the road. If baby goes for the road, the mama bear grabs them by the scruff of the neck and carries them back off into the trees because they're like, hey, don't be dumb. You can't play in the street. You do the same thing to yourself. Hey, you can't eat like that and live to be what you're genetically capable of living, which reminds me. So Twin Tuesday, right? So I drove to Atlanta today. Turn the corner uh, on my daughter's street. Big banner. Big, huge banner in the front yard. Celebrate Mabel Ann. I don't remember what her name was. Something Southern. She's 105 today. I was like, 105 years old. 105? You're fucking kidding me. <laughs> There's a woman in that house that's 105. I want that. You can't live to be 105 if you never exercise. <laughs> and you start your morning with Mountain Dew. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, hopefully in all this babbling, you have some good ideas. Uh, if you need more ideas, please do let me know. I actually do have a one-on-one -on -one coaching package based in human design, available right now. Um, but it does require an interview because I'm not a good match for everybody. I'm pretty direct and blunt. And if you get your feelings hurt from that, then I'm definitely not a good match for you. But if you're ready for direct, hey, you got to quit doing that. Huh? That's not working. Like, I love you enough to be like, that ain't working. That's, that's not good. <laughs> you quit that. But you know what I mean? If you need help and you want to work with me, let me know. We'll figure out a way. Also just reminded me that from wounded to wise is one of those big things that change, that's changing. I've run that course for four or five years. I ran, I realized a few days ago that I was actually running this course in a, throughout my career in different formats, like the heart of it was always the same and I didn't even know. But that six-month course, 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 course is going away. I'm running it for the very last time in 2021, the January to June cycle. So the after that, it's gone. So if you're interested in that, that michellewolf.com forward slash nine centers, a number nine and then the word centers, because we're going through the centers of human design over a six-month magical and practical program. But it's expensive, so you might go look at it now, catch the early bird price, or talk to me about starting a payment plan ahead of time. Whatever! Find yourself some help, get some preparation, and see what happens and so that you can live your best life, right? We don't have time to be fucking around. If you want to be Mabel Ann and 105 years old and look back on your life and go, you know what? I lived the shit out of that life. I accomplished so much. I took so many risks. Look how many times I tripped and fell flat on my stupid face and got back up and did it again. I lived the shit out of that 105 years. And from the sounds of it, Mabel Ann ain't dying. She might be going 110. Who knows? But if that's the kind of life you want, you got to do some things different now. And it's so, like again, I'll say it again, it's so fucking predictable. This is how the brain works. It always works that way. You can't bargain your way around it. You can't fast talk yourself. You can't silver tongue yourself into making 
cha- permanent change and not have to suffer a little bit along the way. It's not going to happen. That's the bad news, but the good news is it's so predictable that you can plan for it and you can prepare for it and you can fuck it up and you can start again and sooner or later, you will get it. You absolutely 100% will achieve that change as long as you just keep coming back. Just keep coming back. You can't not be successful if you stubbornly, lovingly keep coming back. All right? So much love to you in your contemplating process or your action stepping or your relapsing wherever you are right now. Until we talk again, think less, feel more. Check out the website, thatmichellewolf.com. There is some WordPress stuff up there, but it's hard to find. thatmichellewolf.com forward slash WordPress. Don't come talk to me about Wix. I'm not doing it. Or Weebly. Those are garbage. (laughs) If you have them, I love you for it. And also, I'm elitist and horrible and I'll only do WordPress. (laughs) All right, love you guys. Think less, feel more. Talk to you later.